No person has the power to have everything they want, but it is in their power not to want what they don't have and to cheerfully put to good use what they do have. Berserk is a manga that is heavily associated with Stoic philosophy when in reality it's anything but that. Let me make this abundantly clear, Guts himself is not a Stoic, like so many posts will have you believe. Stoicism has certainly lost a lot of its original meaning over time, which has resulted in mentalities such as being unbothered or showing no emotion as a valid term for a complete Stoic. Guts has unfortunately suffered severe mischaracterization as a result of this surging mindset in the manosphere from TikTok gym cells and those horrendous Sigma edits by those who have not read Berserk beyond clip collecting for thirst traps. This video will be mainly discussing things within Berserk and the relation or contrast it has to Stoicism and wider philosophy, not necessarily saying that Berserk is or isn't a Stoic manga and don't expect some planned out essay because to be honest it's just a collection of my own thoughts chucked into a script. An incredibly summarised definition of Stoicism is someone who practices living in accordance with the universe and nature and therefore liberating oneself from dwelling on negativity. To live as the best version of ourselves we must have a succinct harmony with the divine aspects such as fate and nature. Do not focus on external things out of your control, practice a calm, rational temperament. Stoicism is not based upon imagining an ideal society, but rather approaching the current one we have with as much emotional rationalism as possible, always aiming to improve the self with the four cardinal virtues being central to a Stoic's roster wisdom, temperance, justice and courage. Use knowledge to decide things, not emotional influence. Practice restraint, discipline and reject lustful desire. Do not treat others poorly or better based on certain criteria. Practice loving all universally, regardless of their past misconducts. Not for the culprit's benefit, but for your own freedom. Be courageous, not only in extreme scenarios, but face each day with clarity and integrity. And fear not the unknown, for all is planned and in line with nature's wishes. One of the fundamentals with Stoicism is not to battle against the universe or external influences and focus on protecting your peace of mind and creating a healthy relationship between the both. So Guts even being labelled as a Stoic person in the most basic noun definition, let alone school of thought, is ridiculous. Guts is someone who constantly breaks down emotionally, his entire character is about struggle, struggling against the whims of the universe and those who wish to hurt him. The God Hand themselves are physical representations of the universe itself and Guts is an outlier who wishes for their destruction. There is such a difference between a practicing Stoic and one who becomes hardened by the cold world they inhabit, as Stoicism is about controlling the mind, not the body. So, existentialism is a more fitting philosophy for that of Guts, but what exactly is it? Well, it rejects all important meaning in the universe. Life is devoid of such a pleasure and this is supposed to be a freeing mentality. Nothing you do actually matters on the broadest scale, so do as you wish, create, destroy, inspire, mould your own path. This falls under the idea of existence precedes essence, as Jean-Paul Sartre called it, and relates to the belief that we are not granted any predetermined path in life, no province of fate guiding our actions, and within atheistic existentialism, most notably Sartre and Nietzsche, no godly overlook. Sartre also believed that we are a blank canvas to paint our own existence upon the world granted by the chaotic and inherently random world we live in. Man is condemned to be free because once thrown into the world, he is responsible for everything he does. It is up to you to give a meaning. And this relates strongly to Guts, the man who fires back when is shot down by the cosmos, the man who wanders countless days and nights in search of a reason to live, protection of Casca, revenge on Griffith, slaughtering apostles. This is all in Guts's ability to do as he is free and exists on a unique axis just like everyone else. At its most basic form, existentialism inspires freedom of choice within the reality we are chucked into screaming and unprepared. After all, there's no paradise for you to escape to. It is interesting to me that the more we analyse Griffith and Guts, their philosophy tends to blur more often than not. Both wish to carve their own path, achieving something in differing ways, and will use morally ambiguous methods to obtain this. My knowledge on existentialism is severely limited as I'm sure you can tell, so forgive me if mistakes were made, but I do believe Guts adheres to this way of life. The main difference I see between Guts and Griffith potentially would be that Griffith is aggressive, active in his pursuit, whilst Guts tends to react more than attack, passive to most whims of life unless it should cost his own life to be inactive. 
However, this does not mean that the idea of Stoicism is inherently absent from the story of Berserk. It is true actually that even Guts carries aspects that could be accredited to Stoic teaching, especially in the arcs following Casca's rescue from the Tower of Conviction. Moving towards a more Stoic philosophy is certainly in his character's journey in the most basic sense of healing from trauma, but is he anywhere near achieving this state of ataraxia, meaning a serene calmness? No. Throughout the entirety of Berserk, Guts has exhibited severe emotional wrath, which culminates into taking equally severe violent measures. And this is not his fault, don't get me wrong, I am not criticising Guts as a character from the perspective of someone practising stoicism, as his world is so drowned in evil, despair and loss, that finding any optimistic, self-improving tendencies is far more commendable than our modern society in the free world. But from a purely analytical lens, Guts being a stoic has never truly resonated with with me and he far more fits the philosophy such as existentialism in a world that promotes total hedonism and absurdism as the main way of life for those holding power or fulfilment such as nobles and apostles. The world of Berserk can absolutely be seen as a criticism towards the plausibility of Stoicism but mainly due to how controlling the higher beings are. Stoics also believed that the universe itself is a living thing and the god hand and even the non-canon representation of the idea of evil could be seen as a dark a representation of this predestined fate. After all, they led and manipulated Griffith to the breaking point to becoming Femto and continue to affect the real world with their schemes and deplorability. As we progress throughout the story, Guts develops as a character who had no clue in what he wanted, living on the battlefield, putting his purpose into swinging a sword and never feeling at peace with those he was surrounded by. However, with his relationship to Casca becoming infused with passionate love, he realised that a life with her would be the ideal existence for him. Before, Guts wandered aimlessly using his skill as a warrior to kill and survive, however Casca is the first significant shift in his life goals and this is Guts's true objective in the story. However, as we know, this perfect future was stripped from him during the eclipse and Guts was cast back into the hellfire of a world he nearly made it out of. A quote from Seneca, a famous Stoic philosopher hailing from Rome, once said, if a man knows not which port he sails, no wind is favourable. Basically implying that purpose is necessary to live and experience successes, this is something Guts does not have beyond the motivation he gathers from his wrath and hatred. Harbouring hatred and violent thoughts is obviously not in line with Stoicism that encourages the practice of emotional fortitude. Whilst the aim is not to eliminate emotion, it is to control them and leash to the mind rational processes. Guts, however, fails countless times to suppress his emotional trauma and will often burst out in anger, despair, agony and sorrow. He became so fixated on revenge that it swallowed him completely during the Black Swordsman arc and part of the Conviction arc, to the point he was psychotically unstable. Puck was the only positive energy within his life and without him, Guts probably wouldn't have returned to a lighter way after indulging so disgustingly in his violence, slaughtering apostles and demon kind. His philosophy was undoubtedly a self-destructive form of existentialism, prioritising his base urges, his wavering dislike of fate and desire to continue the path he himself carves out, whilst being mentally and physically challenging gave him the most purpose as a result. But he only embodied this dark, begrudging persona as a result of his pain, his fear of what was left, such as the destroyed Casca and the scattered body of the Hawks. Guts was, for the longest time, unable to accept the changing waves of time. Marcus Aurelius stated in his collection of thoughts published meditations that everything you see will soon alter and cease to exist. Think of how many changes you've already seen. The world is nothing but change. Stoics believed time was of the natural order and therefore change was essential for the flow of the universe. Guts, however, seemingly cannot let go of the past, the connection he had with Casca and the fellow Hawks alongside his rage towards Griffith that is still fervent even in the recent manga despite attempts of letting go. One association I do agree with being compared to Guts is Sisyphus, the man cursed by Hades to push a boulder up a mountain for all eternity, never reaching the top, always rolling down when it nears the peak. However, Sisyphus continues to push that boulder regardless of the eternal struggle and this has been interpreted in many different ways. From an existentialist perspective, as mentioned earlier, Sisyphus engages in a fierce battle of defiance despite the beating and thrashing that his situation delivers, his commitment to push 
pushing that impossible boulder up the hill is commendable and therefore worthy of our respect. Guts did make the steps in the right way, abandoning his hunt for Griffith and prioritizing the safety of Casca. This is most symbolized in the I'll never lose her again panel, where his initial resolve is solidified after Godot dissects his path of hate. The thing about hatred, it's the place where people who can't look sorrow in the eye without wavering run off to. This chapter and passage with the elderly blacksmith is often regarded as one of the richest of the manga in terms of introspective quality and practically hits the nail on the head for what Guts became in order to run away from the emotions he could not conquer. Realising his mistakes and immaturity, Guts commits to a new path, but there was an underlying issue that would make this challenge near impossible and the boulder would once again tumble as a result. The Beast of Darkness was originally a metaphysical manifestation of Guts's unrelenting vengeance and tortures his psyche with flashing images of violence towards Griffith but horrendously towards Casca as well. After donning the cursed berserker armor, the beast becomes physically embodied in Guts' fighting. It can make him a mindless murder machine while simultaneously destroying Guts' own body and mind. I take this to be symbolic of the negative effects wrath and revenge can cause as we see Guts deteriorate over time such as graying hair, blindness, shaking and loss of self. The beast is indiscriminate and I'm sure you're all familiar with the make everything food for your malice scene as Guts assaults Casca after his blood is spiked by lust, greed and despair. The beast entices him into wicked, selfish, despicable ways, encouraging the philosophy of Griffith upon Guts. Marcus Aurelius also had something to say about revenge, the best revenge is not to be like your enemy. Whilst I am positive Guts will never stoop as low as sacrificing his comrades for demonic power, it would ruin his entire character after all. The toll of Guts' lifestyle for a very long time was promoting a different way of Griffith's tendencies, giving into hedonistic pleasures, cardinal sin, degenerate and self-serving actions, and whilst Guts doesn't go all the way of assaulting her, it's worrying that even as late as chapter 190 this is a prevalent issue, which is why change must occur. Guts realises that being alone is not safe for him or Casca due to his animalistic tendencies and inability to control himself all the time. Marcus Aurelius advocates for community, many lines of his depicting this sense of social duty to band together in order to create something greater. What injures the hive injures the bee. Guts accepts the help of others, Serpico, Farnese and Isidro to help strengthen his ability to cope. Humans are social animals after all, and without this outlet, we can go mad. Guts experiences this psychosis during the Black Swordsman arc, in which his morals and empathy are at an all-time low. But Stoicism promotes this need for social interaction, sharing our burdens and interconnectedness. It is a significant moment of growth for Guts' character to open himself to others' input, as ever since the Hawks' assimilation, he had closed that avenue off near completely. Completely. However, the change is a much needed one, for the safety of Casca was desperately challenged. Guts wants to be free from the burdens of his former life, yet he does not have much else of a reason to be alive other than the protection of Casca. Although blameless, she is the cruel, unending reminder of that past for which he trains and fights, constantly forced to strain himself for his life against the entities of the night that are drawn to him by the curse mark. In my opinion, Guts does not truly know what he wants in life, he has no special purpose and is always moving around without settling. Although given a temporary asylum in Elfhelm, this was soon stripped from him and began the cycle all over again. Where we are now is the zenith of his despair, Guts has never been more lost as now he cannot even rely on rage to push him forwards. He is chained mentally to his loss, empty in purpose, Casca gone and Griffith unbeatable. These mind-forged manacles have played Guts as a person his entire life, the result of trauma, loss and death all accumulating to an inferiority complex which he has not managed to overcome. He is shown to constantly depict Griffith as a force exceeding his own, the symbolism of the steps during the equal speech, his shadowy figure looming over Guts after the eclipse, and the iconic recreation of the sword standing scene after losing Casca once more, to name a few of the instances where Guts envisions his inferiority. A stoic mindset would be trained in letting go, we suffer more in imagination than in reality. It is no simple task to overcome pain and the philosophy of stoicism may even be impossible to implement successfully in the world of berserk due to its far grimmer nature with its supernatural elements. Stoics attempt to detach themselves from what is out of their control, therefore granting them ease of mind and the ability to focus on the present and what is in their control. 
but this doesn't mean violence is not forbidden as one of the main cardinal virtues is justice. With this basis, violence can be justified as a protection of duty, last resort and defence. Gertz's violence of the past was not this, or at least most of it wasn't. As a sacrifice, this means he exists within both the physical and astral planes, and due to the night causing the strength of the veil to be weakest, this means he is constantly targeted by spirits who are drawn to the brand. Other than this, the hunt for the apostles was pure self-indulgence in his lust for vengeance, however now Casca has been taken once more to Falconia's hold, this provides a violent avenue that Guts, in a stoic's eyes, would be allowed to take whilst upholding virtue. The main distinction Guts will have to make when he mentally improves, which I do have faith that he will, is rescue versus revenge, a battle he is familiar with. Returning to the philosophy of other characters, Griffith is one who embodies a mix, such as Machiavellianism and Nietzschean will to power. Centred around his cold ambition and pursuit of power in its most ultimate state, Griffith employs many schemes and decisions that can be accredited to these schools of thought, such as killing the queen, battering the Kushans, sacrificing the hawks. He manipulates everyone, such as the nobles during the Golden Age, and then civilization itself when he is reincarnated as God pretty much, a stunning facade that is pure evil at its core. Griffith values only the gaining of power, not for the method or emotions of others. I'll not betray my dream. That is all. And with this selfish disposition achieves what Nietzsche coined the Ubermensch, which roughly translates to Superman. Characterized by a surging difference from those deemed inferior, the Ubermensch rises above mediocrity by rejecting societal norms and morals and instead calls for one to carve their own path by power through whatever means necessary. Griffith does this by taking the power of demon kind and bringing it to the forefront of humanity, uniting apostles and humans in battle and coexistence in Falconia, something hitherto undreamt of. Will to power is not inherently an evil ideal, but more about rising above instituted ideals and creating your own. Griffith embodies this to an exact, claiming power wherever he can through manipulation, sacrifice and raw force. We all hate him for one obvious reason, however the way he conducts himself in line to attaining his ambition is nothing short of impressive. In his text Beyond Good and Evil, Nietzsche compares the concept of Ubermensch to leaders such as Julius Caesar, who was all things considered a respected emperor. However, he is certainly steeped in a moral ambiguity, with many suggesting he falls more into a tyrannical power-hungry person, much like Griffith, due to exploits such as his declaration of dictatorship, abandoning republic values present within Rome prior. Obviously, Griffith does not adhere to Stoicism, so I just wanted to explain his character a little bit along with Guts for added context. So, the complete universe of Berserk, what does that promote? Well, Stoics believe that the universe is a living being, but not in the traditional biological sense. They believed the universe was alive, conditioned by the highest form of logos possible, which means reason or thought. Many were pantheists and believed that God, nature and the cosmos existed as one entity, one being that dictated everything and simultaneously was present in everyone. We are not born of a new material and when we die we return to an immaterial state, fusing once more with the elements such as fire and air. Humanity simply adheres to the natural order, and this can be seen within Berserk as well. Although it is not totally canon, the idea of evil is a higher entity that dictates all human fate with countless threads and resides in a place called the Abyss, even deeper and disconnected than the astral realm itself. Just like Guts, it has sense of stoic thought within, but ultimately is something different entirely. Fate versus free will is a continual motif within the story, and the idea the idea of evil and the god hand itself promotes the idea that fate is the status quo. The 97 anime itself proposes this thought as well, the iconic quote, in this world is the destiny of mankind. This is where we can differentiate the universe of Berserk to the belief of Stoics. As Stoics believed our own choices based upon moral reasoning were one of the few things we had inherent control over or ability to alter and change across time, Berserk suggests we are slaves to our ambitions or lustful desires. Epictetus argued that we must make rational decisions based on moral reasoning. 
this term called proheresis is a concept that deals with the will or character of a person and the Stoics believed this was one of the few things in our direct control unlike the flow of the universe. To use one's proheresis in accordance to Stoic philosophy such as the cardinal virtues would grant a freedom to the user and the ability to respond calmly and intelligently to external pressures that might tempt or trick others into selfish choices. Stoicism would suggest that compatibilism should be the considered philosophy which makes Mixes together the idea of determinism, the philosophy that claims every single choice we make down to the very minute decisions has been predetermined by thousands of years of ancestral sculpting, upbringing, childhood, environment and many more smaller factors that ultimately removes the ability to be a free moral agent as nothing we choose to do is truly free will. This inspires the concept that praise and reward is a pointless action as the person who has achieved this was already determined to achieve this and it is not impressive as the person did not really possess a unique ability based on freedom of choices and dedication. Interestingly enough, determinists such as Robert Sapolsky will argue that on the flip side of the futility of praise is the futility of blame and punishment. He claims that only looking at the split seconds of consciously forming an intent and choosing to act upon it is like trying to figure out what a book is about by only reading the final sentence. It is irrelevant as he implies through biological factors that we had no control over, making the person into what they are today. Sapolsky believes in the principle we should run the world without reward, blame, praise and punishment and this mentality surely creates a conflict due to the dangers of society should it be left to this determinist attitude. This is where Stoicism's approach of compatibilism comes in. The combination of moral responsibility and lack of free will results in this belief that even if everything is connected, linked by a cosmic order, that human beings as rational creatures still have the ability to make choices either good or bad from the inner soul that can result in the right to be blamed or punished. Guts and Griffith are both characters that are forced to make cataclysmic choices at high of causality such as the eclipse and Griffith's sacrifice, a morally reprehensible action by all means, or Guts choosing the protection of Casca, outweighing his desire for bloodshed, an ethical and noble choice by all means. Even if the world of Berserk advocates mankind to have no control over his destiny or choices, we can still label the eventual choices characters make as morally good or morally bad, and Stoicism would consider these choices when determining if a person is virtuous or sinful, as they believed in the moral agency and compatibilism. Another contrast for the idea of evil and pantheism is the fact that the idea of evil is a man-made construction. In the Exile chapter 83, it explains that humans wished for reasons, explanations as to why their world was so drowned in death, violence and negativity. This caused the manifestation of this godly being that now controls and manipulates all aspects of life, obeying both mankind's deep desire for pain and evil, whilst also transcending their knowledge. An accumulation of unconscious desire, and this is certainly contrasting to what Stoics believe. The entity named the cosmos is a being that operates in harmony to the existence of humans who'd withdraw from fighting it, however we as spawns of the universe did not control or influence any part of that. So overall, Guts and Berserk itself is not a stoic piece of media in my opinion, as many aspects heavily contrast that philosophy, but little glimpses of a multitude of philosophy can be found within the story and that definitely adds depth and the need for multiple rereads to form new opinions and take up things you may have missed the last time. Applying your own life experiences is always something I encourage whilst reading thought provoking manga and this can be done in how you receive Berserk's message. Please do leave your own comments down below telling me if I missed the mark completely or you simply differ in perspective and I will be glad to engage in any debates you wish. If you enjoyed be sure to like and subscribe, Rota 2K is officially en route and until the next time, peace out.